Thank you for all tuning in to a new episode of A Soldier's Life. Again, I'm Sergeant First Class Michael Ward, the host of our show. Today we have a special guest with us today, Sergeant Santiago Bermudez. Uh, he's the newest recruiter out of our uh, station at Horseheads. And uh, I'm not really stealing him his thunder, so I'll let him introduce himself, tell you a little bit about himself and his uh, career in the Army so far. Sergeant Bermudez? <laughs> Well, like uh, Sergeant Ward was saying, my name is Sergeant Bermudez. Uh, I'm one of the newest members of the Horses Recruiting Center. Um, I'm a 42 Alpha Human Resource Specialist. Been in the Army about eight and a half years right now. Uh, my previous duty stations were uh, Weijambu, South Korea, Camp Stanley, uh, to be specific, as well as Fort Bragg, North Carolina. I uh, got two deployments, uh, one in Iraq and one in Kuwait. Um, been to Germany as well. And just, uh, you know, overall, I've had some great experiences in the Army, so, uh, which is um, also being airborne. Yeah, it's fantastic, actually. Yes. Uh, Fort Bragg is the home of the what? The, the air, Airborne and Special Operations. That's right, right. 82nd yes, Airborne, great United States Army. Um, Sergeant Bermuda is very proud of being airborne, like he talks about it all the time. So this episode is strictly about airborne. We have some great footage about some of the training, some experiences that you'll go through being airborne qualified. Um, not every... Uh, contract that comes through our office or any office can be airborne. There are certain jobs that cannot. Obviously, like a 19 kilo, armor crewman, we cannot drop tanks out of uh, planes. Wish we could, or it's previous seven years, the first seven years I had in the Army, I probably would have been airborne qualified. Um, so we're going to go over some footage of uh, airborne. Airborne, the way soldiers deploy directly to the battlefield, ready to fight. Airborne training is an elite school, training soldiers for forced entry into the battlefield. To earn your airborne wings, you must volunteer and report in good physical shape to attend three weeks of airborne training. Week one is ground training with lots of physical training. You are instructed in the basics of parachuting, from exiting the plane to landing the jump, and you will practice parachute landing falls until you get them right. Completion of week one includes jumping from the 34-foot tower. Week two is tower week, putting your ground week skills into practice, using the suspended harness, and perfecting parachute landing falls on the swing landing trainer plus getting instruction in parachute malfunctions and the use of your reserve parachute. After landing and release practice and the recovery of your equipment, comes the big challenge. Jumping from the 250-foot tower. Week three is jump week. During this week, you will apply the skills you learn for actual jumps. Your parachutes are packed by trained parachute riggers. You will undergo inspection to make sure that you and your equipment are properly prepared to jump. You will board the aircraft. Once on board, you will be inspected again to make sure you are jump ready. You will exit the aircraft from 1,250 feet, going 130 knots. You check body position and count. You check canopy and immediately gain control. During the jump, you will keep a sharp lookout for your entire descent and prepare to make a good parachute landing fall. To earn your wings takes five satisfactory jumps, two with combat equipment and one at night. Finally comes graduation, a feeling of pride, accomplishment of new skills, and a special courage earned with the title Paratrooper.
proud of being a paratrooper because not everybody does it. Not everybody can do it. If one day that we have to jump into combat again, I'm qualified to do it. The 82nd is like a really big, proud, historical family. My leadership's been fantastic. They make sure that as soon as you get into the 82nd that you know what you're a part of now and you're held to those same standards. Some of the standards that you find is you've got to be on top of your stuff. If you don't know what you're doing for your MOS, they make sure that your leadership will teach it to you. The people that I'm working with know how to do their job, and so if I'm unsure of something, they can teach me how to do it, or they can take that from me and be like, here, this is what you need to do. Do it better next time, and hopefully I'll learn from that. But if they were to be like, hey, you're deploying tomorrow, we have our bags packed, we're ready to go, we know our job. Whenever I leave the 82nd and I have to go to whatever unit I'm going to next, I feel like I'll take a little bit of that pride, even if I'm in a different unit and they have a different background. As far as I know, it's unbeatable. Welcome back. So again, that was some great footage of going airborne uh, and some of those experiences you'll go through. So, Sergeant Bermuda, so when, when, you, when you came in, did you have the initial contract to be an airborne? I did not, actually. Okay, so you went through the process, um, like most do, or I should say a lot, mm -hmm. where you applied for airborne down the road in your career. I did, uh, and uh, when I applied, I was about three or four years within my career already. Um, I called what we call a branch manager. Okay. Um, so, uh, call, calling up, each, each MOS has a branch manager. So I called mine and I said, hey, I'm a 42 Alpha, uh, skill level one specialist. I was a specialist at that time. Um, are, do you have any seats available for uh, my m ones to go to airborne school? And they said, oh yeah, absolutely. I'll send you a packet. And I was like, okay, well, that's too easy. So she sent me a packet. I got my commander to approve it. Uh, did all the necessary steps. And next thing you know, I had a school date for airborne school. Awesome, too easy, too yeah. easy. So, yeah, so when he mentioned that that, uh, that ma branch manager, what that is is every branch, every job in the Army has uh, someone up higher who manages your assignments, some of the options you can, some of the schools you can go to, stuff like that. Um, so it made it possible. And it happens to a lot of people come in. They may not initially qualify for that slot coming in, um, but Sergeant Bermuda is being the high-speed NCO that he is and soldier. He pursued that option later in his career. So we tell a lot of our future soldiers, because a lot of them ask about Airborne, and that was really the big reason again for this episode uh, to go over Airborne, um, that you can pursue it down, down the road. Doesn't mean mm -hmm. just when you come in, that's it. So um, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you a couple questions. So when mm -hmm. you first went to Airborne school, it's uh, three weeks long. Right? Three weeks, yep. Okay, so when you first, you went to Fort Bragg, yep. right? For Airborne? So, uh, for Fort Benning. Fort Benning. Now Fort Benning is down in Georgia. Mm -hmm. All right, now when you showed up down there, like. What were your emotions? Were you excited, a little nervous, or what? I was excited and nervous at the same time. Okay, okay, so, which happens a lot, you know? Yeah. Okay, cool, so tell me about that first week. Well, that first week uh, would be ground week. Uh, first you get in, you, you get introduced to your instructors. Um, they start uh, giving you a little, uh, a little bit of pounding, what I like to call. Um, they start uh, drilling you, they start uh, running you. You have to do your physical fitness test to make sure you qualify. Uh, the push-up part is very hard in the, their physical fitness test because they want to make sure you go all the way down. Sure. And so that was just one of those things where a lot of people were nervous about because we've all been, you know, so we're soldiers. We've been in our careers. We've done plenty of PT tests, but it was just that airborne school PT test where um, uh, we heard rumors that they wouldn't pass you unless you had your, your, you did your push-ups all the way down. That perfect form. Way, that perfect form. I got you. Yeah, it happens a lot a lot of our schools, um, whether it's airborne or ranger school, um, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay, so that's week one. Okay, now mm -hmm. um, we have some really good footage, and we're going to go over some of that training, uh, some of these phases that uh, some of our go with. But week two is what? Mm -hmm. Well, week two is tower week. Okay. Uh, once you go through uh, ground week, um, you're already uh, doing that, uh, you know, a lot of running. You're doing a lot of pull-ups. You're doing a lot of block of instruction to get you prepped for um, just uh, being more knowledgeable on uh, the procedures for, uh, you know, exiting an aircraft, you know, a static line, um, just getting um, the overall block of instruction. Then ground, um, then you have tower week. Tower week is they put you on that 35-foot tower. Okay. And you gotta, you're simulating uh, jumping out of a real uh, aircraft, whether it's a C-17 or a C-130. And so that just, uh, all those people that, um, they want to know what it feels like. Well, that gives them a little feel, a little taste of what it is to jump out of aircraft. Stuff like more that confidence. Too. Yeah. I got you. Okay. So it's building. It, uh, Tower week is basically to build up your confidence. Okay, good. Nice. For nice. jump week.
Joint Division. A rendezvous with destiny. Being a Black Hawk crew chief, it's about can you do the job and can you continue to do the job. I think the biggest thing that 82nd Airborne Division cultivates in its soldiers is professionalism. Being a hard worker and working at a high tempo pace, we repair the helicopter. It's a very humbling job. You're never going to know everything and you have to be tenacious and you have to go above your duty because when you're in the air, it's not about you anymore. It's about the rest of the crew, it's about the pilots, and it's about all the passengers that you have on the aircraft with you. We man the 240 hotel and we have one on each side. You might be the only crew chief that morning that has to get the aircraft ready. So not only you're taking all that gear out there, but you're also taking two 240s. If something happens and we have to put the aircraft down and we have to evade, we train for that. When we're doing air assault and we're doing sling loads, you'll see the ground personnel marshalling in, waving in the aircraft. What you don't see is the crew chief. We're sitting in the back above the cargo hole and we're telling them, come left, come right, come up. And there's that trust, there's that relationship. The 82nd Airborne Division is very serious, but I like that because I wanna be with a unit that takes things seriously. We have fun, but we work hard. We constantly make sure that our aircraft are ready to go and are ready to be there for whatever the need or the duty calls. Now, you are gone two thirds away, right? It's coming mm -hmm. up to that hat. You're in third week yes. of uh, Airborne. So right. what's going on in third week? Whew, that's, third week is, uh, that's where, uh, that's where you start to uh, really uh, get a taste of being a paratrooper. So uh, the third week is jump week. Um, you got to complete five successful jumps. So whether it's out of a C-130, a C-17. Uh, when I went to airborne school, I used a T-10 parachute. Okay. Um, also a T-11. That's when they were starting to uh, uh, bring out the T-11s as well. So I got a taste of two parachutes. Um, the difference is... Um, with the T-10, um, you got to count up to four, right? Okay. So 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. Uh, with the T-11, it's, six, it's a, a, six, a count of six. Okay. So 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000. And that's when the shoot okay. um, opens. So. That's good to know because yeah. I know if I'm going to jump out of a plane, I want to know everything I possibly can because uh, not that I'm afraid of heights, but, you know, that's one of those things you better uh, right. understand what's about to go, uh, go down and take place. Right. So let me ask you, Kate, you're going through, you know, two weeks and some change mm -hmm. of Airborne, all right? That day has come. You get yeah. all your gear on. There's that plane, yeah. you know, 100, 200 yards away. Right. What's going through your mind? So I'm good all the way until, uh, you know, we, we sit down in that plane, and then, you know, that's when I, I'm starting to regret the whole oh, yeah? okay. Airborne school. Oh, yeah, okay. Sure, sure, uh, sure. So, uh, that's that's where uh, you know everybody in the plane has this uh, nervous sure. face on uh, look on their face, and uh, we're like, well, we got to execute everything that we train for. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so. Now I know like that that when that that plane is is going up and everybody's mm -hmm. adrenaline's going, everybody's talking to each other. I'm sure, right. right? Oh yeah. So when you get up to that door and you look down and everything looks like the size of an ant. Yeah. Ready to rock and roll, right? Yeah. Uh, well, I wasn't. Uh, well, you you're never ready for that moment. I tell you. Um, that was just one of those moments where, you know, it didn't hit me what I was going about to go through until I hit that door, so. Okay. So when you, and when you jumped out, because I've talked to a lot of people who are airborne and yeah. currently airborne like that, and they say they jump out, shoot deploys, they're doing their thing, and they said that moment of, of uh, when that, it comes in, that the canopy goes out and does right. this thing, and you're just going down, they said it's just, it's fantastic. Like, you've oh, never yeah. experienced anything like it, it's just, like, bliss. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. Um, and one of the things is just that camaraderie that you build. Um, you're able to, uh, you know, go through that with your fellow paratroopers. And, um, I mean, it's just beautiful, a beautiful experience. You know, you gain control of that, that canopy, um, and you're able to, uh, 
you know, experience something that you never experienced before. Nice, nice, very nice. Now, if you look on Sergeant Bermuda's uniform, he's got some jump wings. That's foreign jump wings over on your right-hand side, right? Yep. Now, what, what oh, yeah. country did you jump in? So or, I actually yeah. jumped with the Germans. Okay. Nice. So um, uh, in Fort Bragg, they have like this tradition. Every year, um, they do a toy toy drop, toy, okay. toy jump. So what it is is um, all the paratroopers uh, within the 82nd Airborne, even uh, the Special Forces group, um, we all come together. Uh, we all purchase a toy. And okay. so what they do is they get this big old truck and we put we throw the toys in there. And so the toy uh, it secures a hard slot for us mm -hmm. to be able to um, to get into that jump, whether it's with the Germans, Italians, Spaniards, French, uh, you name it. You got all the countries there. And so we're able to participate and actually jump with those countries nice. uh, from their actual aircraft. Nice. Now those toys are meant for like little kids in the area, stuff like that. Or? Yes, uh, for those kids. Uh, that are you know going through hard times and stuff orphans, like that in the hospitals, like that. orphans, okay, that's awesome. and just uh, for a good cause. Yeah, that's awesome. That's huge. That's, yeah. that's, that's a great way of you know. That's the thing as a soldier that we're consistently just giving back, whether it's to our country, other countries, the communities, so on and so mm -hmm. forth, um, which is which is fantastic. Right. Um, so all right, listen, uh, we really appreciate you coming down here, Sergeant Bermudez. I mean, oh, thank some you really for good. Me. Yeah, no worries, brother. No worries. Yeah. Um, so if you're interested about getting some more information on the Airborne, uh, whether it, whatever job, there's tons of jobs in the Army that can go Airborne, um, please contact us at the Arnett Mall. Um, our our uh, Facebook page is uh, posted down below. And again, you know, there's no commitment by giving us a call or stopping out of the office. Appreciate it. And uh, I'm Sergeant First Class Mike Work and Sergeant Beauties, Strength in the Nation, one commitment at a time. Desert towns.
towns and villages, countless tanks, assault vehicles, and state-of-the-art weaponry. World-class, dedicated opposing forces built from our country's war heroes. Tough, realistic, high-fidelity, brigade-level training. And for one thing, and one thing only, to win the first fight. Every breath, every thought, every success or failure has led them here to this rugged and desolate place. From sea to shining sea they come. This is the United States Army National Training Center. Are you ready?